the best damn nation and Mr. Renegade. Stephen Meeks is being a little bit too humble for you, for you all, because uh, Stephen Meeks has a little talent that I think he should share with the world. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let him know what you can do, brother. Let him know what you can do. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Huh? What we doing? I can, hug, I can give a, bit, a virtual hug. No, 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 no. Let them, let them, let them hear the voice. Let them know what the voice. Ah, man, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to get my guitar. Maybe, maybe I'll get my guitar later. If, if the connection is still good. At the end of the show, uh, Stephen yeah. needs to go and give us a little piece of the. Uh, the uh, I'll try a little bit. Look, look, the world. I did that. Barbershop cro crooning. Right. For us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I grew up. I grew up singing in barbershop quartets. That was like my first like. It was it was originally loving people through barbershop harmony. Now it's loving people through wrestling. Uh, we... <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Uh, listen, that's that's kind of big in the south too, man. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, yeah. on, on my on my side of of my father's uh, family, uh, I come from the quartet gospel group kind of uh, lineage. Uh, George Dickens and the Gospel Disciples, man, they're well known in the Carolinas and up and down. Uh, the East Coast, man. So uh, legendary group. So that's cool that you have uh, an influence like that. Uh, talk about we that. Could, for we a could second. sing like a barbershop tag together sometime. You know? Hey, Let's I got, I, I, got, I, got I got to practice a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can play a hell of a, of a triangle, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. A cowbell. I'm a, I'm a hell of a cowbell player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, you just mentioned uh, you went kind of like on a spiritual journey, right? And I'm pretty sure that you're still on it. Uh, talk about your spiritual journey, man, and, and what are some of your uh, things that you're trying to work on for yourself? Yeah, uh, so I got saved. Like, I gave my life to Christ when I was 19. Uh, and, like, it was right before the pandemic had started. And uh, at the time, like, I was singing in a in an acapella group that uh, that toured and did a lot of, did a lot of, like, mission work uh, for, for like a Southern Baptist college here. And, uh, um, that was kind of like my mission. Like I wanted to teach music and that was kind of like what my heart was set to do. And then COVID happened. And then I moved back home to Eastern Kentucky. And then I, I, I kind of just in the, in the strangest way possible, got involved in this uh, wrestling stuff. And, uh, I, it's like, I couldn't really see it so much then because obviously I was like super young to the faith and like, I was still learning how to, you know, uh, like hear, respond and obey. And so, and that's like kind of, those are kind of hard skills to humble. Uh, so they take time. You have to spend time with, with, uh, with God to build that relationship so that you can, you guys can communicate better together and whatnot. So, uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Just trying to spend time in the word and, and whatnot, you know, like that's like, I think I received confirmation from him like like yesterday I was at a my accent is going crazy right now my like yesterday uh, I was at a uh, like a college age uh, ministry group and uh, like if I if I had like one of those baseball tickers I, the amount of times I heard the phrase like love people in that context and it's like it's just so cool it's almost like an affirmation you know what I'm saying because that's like that's the root of like any kind of medium that I that I put time into like obviously like that's the goal is to love people through whether it's like music or wrestling or just, you know etc oh man and so it's, it's great that you have a, a love of, of music and and wrestling man do you find some type of a therapy or uh some kind of of a solace in wrestling yeah, I think the two go together super well. Like, uh, I mean, I think wrestling definitely uh, opened me up and like got me more comfortable in my own skin to where like it, it definitely makes my music uh, a little bit better too. like performing music, whether it's in an acapella group setting or a, or a quartet or, or me with my, my guitar and whatnot. Uh, and also I find myself like in regards to me, learning wrestling whether it's the the physical aspect of it because a lot of wrestling like has like a cadence to it you know what i'm saying it's got like a heartbeat there's a rhythm there so like i definitely i definitely feel that in the ring uh like 
you know, whenever I'm working with somebody. And um, I also like the storytelling aspect of uh, wrestling, because obviously I grew up singing barbershop harmony. That's like all storytelling. You know, it's uh, it's four four men with without a net. You know what I'm saying? Singing close harmony, and a lot of it's sung without meter. So it's like you phrase it in ways to get to emphasize certain things. It's not there's not like a strict rhythm that it's that it's held to. You know what I'm saying? And I think uh, you know wrestling is kind of the same way. I guess. But yeah, I think the two go together super well.